just like uh, how nice you were this morning by kicking me in the head with a boxing glove on your foot. That happened. People should not wear boxing gloves on their feet. But I've been punched a handful of times with bare fists, and I've been punched hundreds of times with boxing gloves. I don't know. If you run at me, I feel like I'm going to squeeze you until your eyes pop out of your head, and I'm going to eat your eyes, and then I'm going to put fake eyes over your dead eyes. Really, with some force, giving me a concho yeah. in the rectum? Yeah. I wouldn't have turned around and punched you or anything, right. but I would not be amused. Oh... G'day, USA. My balls is totally moving. Do it improving. Not can we get back through. I got the heart and desire. My balls are on fire. You're ready to take us to the top. Welcome to Oh, man. <laughs> how's it going? Welcome to the show, I mean. But also, how's it going, everybody? Because we got a guest regular. It's not a, it's a Jason Ellis show regular that's the guest because guests, it's weird. I don't like new people. Zoom makes me, ew. I don't, I gotta, I gotta go. So this is family. This is Mike Catherwood. Everybody knows Mike Catherwood. Mike Catherwood is, um, uh, 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 you're, a, he's an addict. You say that even when you've been sober, right? Yeah. I, well, I am. He's I'm still full on me. addict. You guys, he died a bunch of times from heroin and now super advanced, most caring man I know and handsome <laughs> getting older now, which is fun. Cause I'm like, fuck you suffer. I hope you fucking look in the mirror and go, Man, I used to have better days. Cause fuck your hairline. I do. I do. And fuck good. Suffer. He's very shredded. Uh, a great husband and father, and just a great all round dude. Terrific. He always lover. shows up. Always <laughs> committed. In Excellent me- texture. All that stuff. Thanks. So there's a he's a Cinderella story of what you can do to turn your life around uh, when you think you're down and you're a steaming pile of shit. Look at him. He was totally steaming in a hospital. Once he was steaming dead in an ambulance yeah and then they stabbed him with a thing that made him come back to life and look at him now i'm very ste- i was steaming i was very steaming yeah yeah so don't give up everybody it's never too late and one day you could be like mike catherwood well thank you jason i i you know all three of you i love being here so it's always nice so that was my superhero speech so yeah. i gotta take my heat waves off and get let's get to business oh my god it was jason the entire time what? That's crazy. Right. Now let's get elementary. Oh my God, it's Henry Rollins. Ah, oh, fuck. Really? <laughs> when did no. this well red genius get here? Well, he's the only tattooed muscular guy that wears those glasses. You think I, he's I, gay. I've I've often wondered, but then I go. I always felt like he had a secret relationship with Morrissey. Um, well, uh, many people say there's a lot of they both um, not fucked each other. Punk rock uh uh campfire gossip that um, his friend, which is, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to at all even assume, I don't want to at all even flirt with the idea of talking poorly about, um, he had a very close friend that he was roommates with in Venice back in the day. And that guy got murdered on their front porch oh, shit. and there's a big belief that they were actually more than friends. But again, that could just so be, uh, you're in that world, which is fucking the worst, most cancerous hater filled world besides maybe MMA. And he's smart and doesn't use drugs and he's buff and people are going to figure out any way to talk shit you know i think wow that's crazy i have a, a little bit of a, a a strange relationship with him not not in a negative way it's just like i can easily see how he's at times cringy um but in every personal interaction that i've had with him and some of them were extended he's always been so nice and invested in listening to me and 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 made an effort to 
make me happy and comfortable. So I, I, I like him very much. Yeah, you're a really nice guy. Just like uh, how nice you were this morning by kicking me in the head with a boxing glove on your foot. That happened. People should not wear boxing gloves on their feet if they're thinking that that is going to protect the other person from kicking them in the in the head. Remember that, everybody, when you look at the night sky. Oh how much God. how much difference does a boxing glove make in general? Because there's obviously boxing, and then there's MMA, which is four-ounce gloves, and then there's bare-knuckle boxing. Yeah. So I, I think Jason would probably be a much better person to ask, but I've been punched a handful of times with bare fists, and I've been punched hundreds of times with boxing gloves. It still will fuck you up and make you all dizzy with a boxing glove, absolutely. But the the visible immediate trauma is is much less like i i gotten punched in, in like fist fights and stuff where i didn't even think it it harmed me that much and then i get to the mirror for the first time i'm like oh fuck what am i gonna do you know especially like when i was in high school i was like my parents can't see this this is bad news you know like black yeah. eyes and cuts and stuff right which i very rarely have even with sparring and boxing but i still get dizzy and i'm like that probably wasn't healthy i think mma gloves are the ones that do the most damage just on your hands, if you have no gloves and you punch somebody, I feel like that is, you might, I think I'd rather get punched in the face than punch you in the face with no glove. I guess my hands are kind of thick, so maybe I get away with a couple, but if you had a real fight where you had, uh, you know, like six or seven minutes landing shots on each other, bare knuckle, I heard a few of those bare, bare knuckle guys talk about it. They're saying that... uh they're throwing so hard and their hands get numb and they can't, they're start, he found it hard to keep making a fist. His fingers would come out because he's not used to having like no wraps or anything to kind of keep your hand balled up. And I remember that last MMA fight I had, I can't remember what it was. I don't know if I blocked something or landed a knuckle, but um, from not having a lot of MMA fights and being a boxer all the time, I was... Uh, throwing hooks where I was let my, my hand, my knuckles were hitting him before my knuck. Sorry. These ones were hitting before the other ones. And these two knuckles were, were fucked for months after that fight. And I've heard I didn't it, even know. I didn't, I couldn't tell you when it happened. I've heard a lot of really high level MMA fighters who transferred over from boxing or kickboxing say yeah. the exact same thing. Cause you get so used to, you, you form that muscle memory of hitting with a boxing glove Yeah, and it's just different. Trying to land without hurting yourself with a, a four ounce glove is even it's blocking different. stuff. Yeah. Like if somebody throws a punch and you roll with it, yeah. if you roll with it with no gloves on, it's his knuckles straight into the top of your hand. Like yeah. you probably break your hand pretty easy. That's my number one beef with bare knuckle fighting is I would love to do it, but I like to go to multiple hand surgeons for one fight. Because that's you got to think that's a 50-50 chance. It seems like that in their in their organization. It seems like uh, their hands are at least incredibly sore for three to four months after oh, the yeah. fight. If it goes more than more than one round. Yeah, and I I was having this discussion with a a group of people who are not they don't have real any experience with with fighting and things, and they were saying like that seems crazy. Like these people are gonna fuck themselves up, permanent damage, the whole thing. And I was like. Uh, I have to disagree because I really do think, like Jason said, the biggest threat is the fist because if we're worried about trauma to someone's face and body, there's kids in Thailand that have like 400 fights that get elbowed in the face and need in the face. Isn't the science... A million times worse isn't than Isn't there science that proves that soccer is bad for your brain? Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. It's, it's not... People worry about the one big blow, the concussion shot... But soccer, the classic example is a kid might go out there and practice heading a ball 500 times in a day. Yeah. And that's all little bits of trauma. But that's true. Is is Thailand just the CTE capital of the world? Like nope. if you go to a, to, a, to a Thai prison. Everybody's just depressed trying to kill each other. <laughs> no, because. It, it, How about I make a deal? You kill me, I kill you. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> Everyone's trying to make suicide dip bends <laughs> all first, day. First we eat pad thai, yes. then we kill each other. It's it's very interesting because <laughs> what you, you talked about. You can get about, pad thai in prison in Thailand. I think you could get. I a think lot that's of the only thing you eat in Thailand. Do you think Thailand, it's a good period. pad thai, or do you think it's a bad one? I think it's probably better than anywhere else in America. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just saying, it couldn't be that bad. They don't do bamboo and the nails anymore, do they? I very, know very little about Thai prison, except for the fact that there's a certain Thai prison 
the most gnarly one where you can actually fight your way out of it. That's right. Yes. yes. That yeah. is real. Yeah, we had a guy from a documentary about that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was here that day. It, it, that's a oh, real thing. Were we thing. all part of that conversation? Yeah, Sweet. it's a crazy thing, and it's real, and uh, um, people don't understand, and I'm, I am I really love like, Muay Thai, uh, all about it, everything about it, but um, people don't understand. They think it's like, oh, in Thailand, Muay Thai is big. It's like baseball or football in America. No, 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 no. It's part it's of their culture. Yeah. It is, they look at it as the king of Siam hundreds of years ago. That was how you so asserted you're, yourself as a Thai. When you're a young boy, you just have fights. So you have like 150 fights until you get brain damage. And then you get brain damage and you go crazy and you rob a bank. And then you go to jail and you get sad and you make bets with everybody else on who's going to kill me or I kill you until somebody kills you or you kill yourself seemingly though damage. yay thailand what tolly was talking about with the soccer ball stuff the 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 constant low level stuff yeah. that seems to be true because because if that's as bad yes then i don't feel like everyone gets it if you're gonna say we're crazy for taking fights because yeah. you can get hit in the head and soccer if you had uh, the ball all your whole career that that is just as bad for your brain then what you eat cheeseburgers if you drink beer every night shut the fuck up like yeah. if you yeah. smoke a cigarette and you're telling people man don't risk your brain i feel like and this is completely uneducated moron jargon but you train you're fit you're healthy yeah you get hit in the head and there's certain people i feel like that do it in a way where it's not the sport Really tough people fight all the time because they're very angry and they want to fight. And to, and if you're fighting someone where you're trying to do damage to them because that's how you fight, then you obviously have to be in agreement that they are doing the same to you. Mm. So often through your week, you're having scraps with somebody where you're going tit for tat, hitting each other in the head. Well, that's I think a lot of other people that are uh, high level athletes in mixed martial arts aren't just like yeah Friday fucking whoa whoa fucking yeah. everyone just cracking each other's brains senselessly. I don't think everybody does that anymore. And I think that person, like the new age one, George St. Pierre is old. I don't think George St. Pierre has any brain damage because I think he trains in a very professional manner. When he trained, I think, did he have hard sparring? Of course. But I think once he knew enough of what hard sparring was, did he just continue because that's what he is used to. I don't think he did. I think he's more of an advanced human than that. He's a thinking man's fighter. But I, I think everybody is starting to adopt, you know, the more advanced train of thought for fighting. What does your personal care routine say about you? Whether you keep it simple or have a 10-step plan, premium grooming products make all the difference in how you look and feel. And with Hawthorne, you can get the most out of your personal care routine with high-quality shampoo, body wash, and hand, hand soaps, and even a luxurious sandalwood shaving gel, all made without sulfates, parabens, and other harsh chemicals. I like the soap. I like to lather it up in my butt and clean my butt <laughs> real good. Because I'm not a stinky butt guy. I don't like that. And no I find that him. big soap block does great stuff. And I'm sure you guys have noticed how great my eyes look today. Yeah. It's because of my brightening under eye corrector. I got that too. Yeah. Yeah, I look years younger. Yeah, the quiz is easy. You go online, you take the quiz, it asks you a question about like your your hair, your like skin texture. Yeah, I didn't like that question. Uh, you know, if you have oily or sensitive skin and the way you answer, they groom they like personally put yep. together a thing packaged just for you and you pick what you want it's get it shipped to you yeah it's it's awesome take hawthorne's quiz today and get started on your personalized self-care routine by going to hawthorne.co and use promo code ellis to get 10 percent off your first purchase that's h-a-w-t-h-o-r-n-e dot c-o promo code ellis hawthorne.co promo code ellis we are here today to talk to you about athletic greens. And when we're talking about athletic greens, to me, it's about one word, bioavailability. Jason, do you know what bioavailability is? I don't want everybody to know how dumb I am, but not. What is the good of getting a whole bunch of vitamins and minerals in your green drink if you pee them all out? Yeah. Then you're just getting expensive urine. Athletic Greens is all about bioavailability, not just putting the best stuff in your body, but having your body actually absorb it and retain it. Whoa. Yeah. One tasty scoop of Athletic Greens contains 75 
bioavailable vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients, including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, greens, superfood blend, and more that all work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, increase energy and focus, aid with digestion, and supports a healthy immune system, all without the need to take multiple products or pills. And right now, Athletic Greens is doubling down on supporting your immune system during these uh, upcoming months. They're offering our audience a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. If you visit our link today, basically you'll never need to buy vitamin D again. Simply visit athleticgreens.com slash J-E-S and join health experts, athletes, and health-conscious go-getters around the world who make a daily commitment to their health every day. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash J-E-S and get your free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today. I think that's why there's not vegetables walking around Bangkok all day is because the Thais were way ahead in that regard. With Their sparring has always been technical movement. They fight, they fight hard. But sparring in Thailand, like traditional Muay Thai gyms for, for many, many years has been about just let's go because we don't want to con- because we fight so frequently in the ring. We don't want to accrue too much right. damage in sport. I got to tell you guys something. I almost forgot. I saw uh, somebody sent me a video of the weirdest skateboarder. He's known as the weirdest skateboarder. In Simon Woodstock. No, you know what? <laughs> he's kind of like Simon Woodstock, but he's I believe he's Ukrainian or something like that. And That's he lives on say. this weird little farm in his parents like little like he lives in a little house where he makes a lot of art he creates uh clay molding stuff so he's an artist who also drinks schnapps the whole time <laughs> but he's a he's a skateboarder that can do stuff on the street that is f- fully legitimate like he'll do kickflip and land up with one foot on the board and Ooh. do a one-footed nose wheelie and then like kick the wall and turn back in a nose wheelie but he's known most known for is he puts both this is so insane dude he puts both feet, the toes, on the tail. And then, like a little kid, both hands on the nose. So he's in, like, a horsey stance. Oh, with Do his knees under- bent or, like, downward dog? He is, like... It's bunny style is what he calls it. Bunny style? Here come bunny style. Yeah. Give me one second. Uh, no. Time for bunny style. Point this, point this down. But it's like this. He puts his feet on the tail mm-hmm. and he holds the nose and he drops in on stuff and skates in this position. So he flips Wait. around skating in this position. Right. So it kind of looks like a, a jockey riding a horse. It's and so- he drops in on a on like a, a half pipe doing that. Well, not only does he drop in on a half pipe, there's a documentary about this guy and Rick McCrank, who's a friend of mine along uh, from a way, way, way back in the day, Red Dragons. Shout out to everybody out there in Canada. But Rick McCrank, one of the greatest skateboarders that ever lived, obviously, um, you know, and on the other side of things, we're all older, but still uh, a legend in his own right. Uh, he is the the uh, the interviewer of this guy. So it's a documentary where another pro skateboarder who's been around is in awe of this younger guy sure. who his biggest thing that he wants to achieve is fucking jump the mega ramp in the fucking rabbit stance. Ugh. So apparently he tried it once and it failed. How did he try it? He came over here. He goes, yeah, he can't. Yeah, no, he's here. Okay. Yeah, he came over. Yeah, so he came to the one in Temecula or something, but he went there with Rick McCrank and he dressed up with a, in a fucking bunny suit and drank schnapps at the bottom of the ramp. Fuck yeah. And then uh, tried to roll from halfway because this one didn't have a gap it uh it had like a you can you jump all the way over but there's uh there's stuff on top there's a decking not a big gap like uh lizzie armanto falling in yeah it's another place but beside the point he couldn't go fast enough in the rabbit stance to make it if you can pull it up the weirdest skateboard if we could show people it's that would called be called schnapps and the bunny suit yeah, yeah schna- i've got that up it's a david lynch film so dude in the end, he 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 quits. He he chickens out, and he starts crying. Oh, he's wearing football shoulder pads. Yeah, uh, I mean, dude, if you're gonna ride the mega ramp and you don't know what you're doing, I I'm not laughing at anybody. All the pads you can find, 
that you should put him on. Well, and also he probably was so disappointed to realize like the physics of it doesn't work out. Like this isn't gonna. Well, in the end, I mean, I don't want to spoiler alert it, but he does go for it. In the very end, he actually goes for it. And and to me, I've told you guys, you jump the gap. Yay, good for you. The quarter pipe is where the men show up. Oh, that's the wrong term. Is where the gusto shows the up. The badasses. Yeah. yeah. It's where it's where now you're talking about life and death. When you're going over the gap, yeah, man, you can get really hurt. Uh, and Lizzie Armato just proved me wrong. You could probably die going over the gap as well. <laughs> that was gnarly. But the quarter pipe is where there's actual G forces. Like when you go up that first transition, you feel like you've got like a 300 pound rack across your back. Like you go, oh. you feel that as you go shoop, and fly into the air. So when you feel all that weight on you, you have to hold it in the in the spot that you're supposed to be in to take off. And it's fucking, we're talking, you can't like all of a sudden drop a little bit or all of a sudden stand up. You have to stay level and and rock it off this thing. <laughs> but he fucking did He fucking did it and went into a backflip across the whole thing and, and just landed on his head and called that a make. I like that guy. But it's still, is it is it a make? No, but because he's in a rabbit stance, <laughs> it's, sorry, a bunny hop or whatever the fuck he calls it, he does yeah. roll down and roll in in a fucking rabbit stance and goes off the kicker. Like, look at that. Yeah, committing to the yeah, attempt like, is worth something in its hell, own hell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, and he's just gone, completely out of frame. But it also makes me realize, like, you, the mega ramp is no joke, man. Like, watch this guy's videos. He can do a lot of stuff. But the mega ramp made him think differently. But I just thought, what a legend. The way he thinks... All his original tricks. You got to see it, Michael. Like him, he has actual really legit professional talent skateboarding. And some of it involves him bunny hopping around like a rabbit. Like, right. But it's but then he'll go into a thing. where, he, Like Rick McCrank, he does a trick and Rick McCrank tries to learn it. And it, and he he's like, this is impossible. And he has millions of them. Yeah, he, well, he's an odd dude. Gimmick guys and girls are always better when they master the actual real thing and then yeah, become the gimmick. Right. It's it's just always so much better when they take the long route. Now, Kevin was flipping through some some clips and I saw what is it? Why does the Ukraine and Russia same basic thing in my mind? Why do they always look exactly like I expect them to look on video every single time. He does some little trick and I'm thinking he's like in his backyard and sure enough, there's this little old lady wearing like five trench coats and like kerchiefs and like this much of her <laughs> face that's like smushed by life. It's like, oh, what is that boy doing? Where did I put my potatoes? With soup. Like, yeah, she has is, like soup ready. How many of those ladies are there in Russia? Because it seems like you, I think can't it's get, all. you can't get street footage without getting that lady. I think it's I all mean, if you ladies. you go to Santa Monica Boulevard right now, they're all there. <laughs> I, I also like how the um, legendary skateboard from generations past all have that, the same outfit too, the same look. You know, like if yeah. you see if you see McCracken, Ed Templeton, uh, Rodney Mullen right now, they're all wearing the Oxford shirt and like the, the work chinos like it's yeah. every guy. That's the look. It's a vibe. Yeah, it's a vibe for them. If it ain't broke. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, but uh, I just think he's I just think it was such a I mean, maybe it's a bit easier for me to understand, but just the creativity and the non influence of every other skateboarder in the world, like to somehow put 10 years in and and very rarely look like any other skateboarder at all. Mm -hmm. Sure, when you're rolling standing up, you look like the rest of us. But apart from that, I mean, everything he does is... He was just skateboarding in water. Yeah, he... But look at that. He does, like, fucking Rodney Mullen shit. Like, he that's, is legit. That's one of the unfortunate side of... Negative side effects of the internet. I know everyone will go to the, you know, the narcissism, whatever. I see one of the big ones is that before the internet, Almost all skateboarders or people who developed their own uh, clothing style or people who were into boxing, you almost always saw them develop this unique personal style because they weren't constantly seeing everybody else do it. They yeah. only had access to like the maybe handful of people that they did it with. And so you didn't have the restraints of knowing, well, well, this is how it's customarily done. Now with the Internet, every kid is so inundated with like all of what's what's supposed to happen. That they don't, you don't, you don't oftentimes see that as much. Well, and also not as significant, but you have so much video of yourself. Yeah. You, you might not have realized how weird your style was, <laughs> but now you're constantly judging yeah. your own footage against other people's footage. 
It reminds me of, I wasn't there for it, but I don't know which one of you guys was in the NBA a long time ago when it was black and white television and you were doing the up underhand shit. Yeah. yeah. That guy was like the highest scorer of uh, free throw shots yep. at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, the fuck, man? And 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 I'd be like, what the fuck leading scorer of, of this position? Suck my ass. Yep. I'm pretty sure to this day, the guy, the guy who holds the record, I don't even know if he was an NBA guy. He may have been a globetrotter, but literally holds the record for the most consecutive made free throws. Not in a game. Just come on down to the bar and that guy's going to see how many free throws he can hit in a row tonight. Would hit like 600 in a oh row. Oh my God. Underhand. Yeah. Underhand. Everybody said that about Shaq when he was playing. Oh, Shaq should have been shooting underhand. Yeah. Bill yeah, Walton. He was so cool that that was, it, it was, it was so it was, uncool. It was, it's like a bocce ball for him. It would have made more sense for him to Physi flip it. Yeah. The physics of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I, I Do you guys remember? I mean, I, of course you remember. Everyone remembers the game Goldeneye on N64, the, the Bond game. Everyone uh, played that sure. shit in the late no, 90s. Natasha tries to help you. You murder her. Right. Yeah. You, you Where you get your other four <laughs> friends, you fucking shoot them. You didn't play that? No. Nah. Uh, okay. Well, it was, it was really like one of the biggest landmark games in home console history. I spent most of my childhood running from possessed wallabies. I, I, I believe that, but this was like 98. Yeah, so I would have thought, then. okay. Yeah. Um, wallabies don't leave. <laughs> so, so this game, it was landmark. It, it really, people bought N N64s for this game because everybody played it and it was so fun. It was so amazing. The people, the video game developers for that game had never made a game before, but they were too scared to tell the the people in charge, the either Nintendo or the contract uh, negotiators, because they didn't want to lose out on the money. Mm. But they were software engineers, and they're shitting themselves because they're like, we don't know how to make video games. The reason that game came about is because they had no idea what they're doing. So they're like, let's just do this. Sounds cool. Sounds fun. Yeah. It would have never happened if they had the restraints of knowing what the customs are, you know? Right. So I never played it, but my college roommate did. So I mm. watched it forever. And I do recall him murdering Natasha over and over again. When yes. she tried to she'd be like, James, I can tell you where the weapons are located. And he'd be like, shut up. Boom, boom. She'd be like, no, James, please. I'm trying to help you. And then you continue shooting her. I don't remember seeing a game before that where you could kill anybody. All things. You always tried to kill your friends. And yes. they're like, come on, game. What are we doing here? Yes. Everything's open for murder. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was it was a big time advance. That guy was doing some weird shit. I was watching more of his video, the the bunny hop guy. Yeah. And it looked like he was putting You're um, becoming a fan, aren't you? Spark plates on his yeah. tail. Yeah. So when he like grinds things, it yeah. just shoots sparks all over the yeah, place. Yeah, they're not all winners, but what No, I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I saw I, I didn't know what you were gonna when you said you saw some really weird skater. I, a couple years back I started seeing there was like this wave of it almost seemed like hipster skaters. Yeah. And they were doing really, really weird shit, just like picking their skateboard up and throwing it at a wall, and then it would flip around and bounce all over the place, and then they'd jump on it. People have been doing that for years. And then they were like, that was my trick. Yeah. But it's, it almost seemed like uh, like cheating. Like no. they were double dribbling yeah. if there's a skateboard e equivalent of yeah, it. It's a bullshit artist trick, but that's congratulations to you, you untalented hippie. YouTube, YouTube and Instagram did that for a lot of things. In 2021, talking about mental is finally a thing, and that's why we are excited to be sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. If you know me, you know that I've been to therapy and I've had a lot of issues in my life, and I feel like my only regret was not going to therapy sooner so that I could be less of a hassle to all my friends and family. BetterHelp is it's customized online therapy. You don't have to go see somebody and it can be very very intimidating i've been there going to a doctor's office it's weird to walk in a place and say i'm here because my brain doesn't work and yeah. i'm an emotional mess this is just a much easier and and frankly more convenient way of getting the help that you you might need it's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours that's why millions of people have tried better help this podcast is sponsored by better help and the jason ellis show listeners get 10 percent off their first month at betterhelp.com slash ellis that's better h-e-l-p.com slash ellis we are here today talking to you about mac weldon everybody in this room we are all fans right i've got their undies on right now oh yeah you got them on the right way i think i do nice. i accidentally put mine on backwards guess what Still comfy. <laughs> nice. They're that good. Wow. 
You can even wear them incorrectly. That is <laughs> that's a great promo. They're going to be really stoked. Jason, you've been happy with all your Mac. Yeah, Logan man. Stuff, they right? got really. I'm a, 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 a pretty critical on t-shirts, and they got a really solid t-shirt and a solid sweatshirt. That when you take it off, it doesn't. The inside doesn't come off on your t-shirt. All these things are critical to me. The next day is good after you wash it. It's got good stuff. Well, summer is here and you're going to want to dive into Mack Weldon's swim line with trunk and board short options that are quick to dry and have four-way stretch fabric when you're not in the pool. Mack Weldon's new Maverick Tech Chino Short and Radius Short are the perfect additions to your summer wardrobe. Mack Weldon also has a free loyalty program. You can get free shipping. You can get discounts. And uh, for 20% off your first order, you should visit MacWeldon.com slash Ellis and enter promo code Ellis. That's MacWeldon.com slash Ellis, promo code Ellis for 20% off Mack Weldon, reinventing men's basics. You know, I, you know, you know, Hoonigan approved my stunt and they want me to do it next Friday. Oh which my God. So by the time this comes out, I'll be dead. <laughs> I'm, I'm get. doing so here's I'm going to have a ramp. I've got I went to the hardware store and bought wood that doesn't fit in my Jeep. <laughs> so then I cut the wood. I got the guys to cut the wood and then it went back. It still didn't fit in the Jeep. So then I put it on the roof and I got Katie to go buy tie downs to tie down my wood onto the roof. Yes. And now I'm, I'm picturing getting, Fred Flintstone getting food delivered to I car. so <laughs> contemplated just doing the arm thing, but I was like, come on, dude, you're <laughs> fucking almost 50. So, yeah, I got to tie down. <laughs> Dinosaur bone. <laughs> I was like, I can make it. <laughs> I swear. I saw something the other day that like 8% of Americans think that they can beat bears hand to hand. I'm like... I saw that. I, I mean, I'm so close to stupid. Yeah. Wait, but... I is, think I can beat. Is it that far off? Is I think I can far beat, off. I said I, I've always said I could beat a bear with a sword and a shield. I never said I could beat hand to hand. That's ridiculous. Was it? I don't know how much difference it makes. I, I saw that same headline and thought of you immediately, Jason. Was it bears or was it tigers or lions? Both. There's no, no, no. The six percent is bears, and eight percent of all Americans believe they could beat a tiger or a, a lion. In a I place. see, and I'm hand. dumb, but I would think that I'd have a better chance with a bear. I my my estimation for me with tiger and lion is 0%. You're dead. Yeah. It's only a matter of time uh before its claws get to the body in a in a, a way that you're mortally wounded. No. I think a bear just because of its structure at least you have some chance How to like How does that make any sense at all? A bear is so much bigger and more powerful and wider and what is your actual blow? What are you giving the bear that that, that you can deter a bear? Like maybe finger him in the anus or something and he's like what i don't do that and he leaves yeah but if it's an actual i've got to make the bear fucking submit yeah no How i didn't know I, I, you know what i in my mind i'm thinking of what move escape, do you use? i'm thinking of escaping being a victory and i and yeah. with, with that i see like i see like i stand some chance with the bear with a liner tiger, you're you're done. If it decides it's going to kill you, you're going to die. Uh, I don't know. I feel it like may not could, be now. You could take a tiger's back and choke it out. No, dude. What? You've been near tigers. Yeah. Okay. Their neck is like this, Jason. Nah. You're not choking nah, it out. No, nah, it's not. No, it's not big enough for me not to get my arms around. I didn't say you couldn't get your arms around it. I'm if saying. You can get your arms around it. Just, oh, crazy fucking good. Go to sleep, kitty, you motherfucker. You could do it. Dude, they jump like. See what I mean? Moron. I'm convincing myself right now that I could do it. They jump like seven feet in the air. Like you're not staying on their back. I don't need to go seven back. foot in the air for this fight. My point and is, you is that- You jump in the air seven feet. I'm like, sure, you're coming down sooner or later, fuck face. The explosiveness in that animal, you're not staying on the back. You're not cinch, cinching in the choke. What about I do, if I, I punch do like my... into his mouth <laughs> and hold onto his tongue and choke him to death while he's eating my arm? He might just be able to bite it off. Maybe, but maybe not. It might be I a little bit. I think you might overestimate your ability to hold on to a beast's tongue while it's biting you. Yeah, touche. And what how, about if I blow how it easily it would just pull your arm off? I mean, it would be <laughs> pull his arm off. See, a couple things. You're talking about sticking fingers in butts. Yeah, we were talking about that in the show recently. Well, I, of course, I don't remember if that. it was here or if it was on one of the Patreon broadcasts we do two a week. Patreon.com/slash Ellis Mate. Remember that guy said he went to a wedding somewhere and everybody was trying to stick their finger in his ass. What? Oh yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Good. I oh no, but I didn't I've, dream that. You know what? I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. I found out that that is the new thing. What? Okay. People are a lot of girls now are fingering boys in the bum. Well, okay. Now we've changed, not changed the, things. I'm not okay in the now. Hole, not in the hole. Yeah. 
through your shorts. Oh, when Catherine, when, Cather, when you were young, you totally did that to your friends, right? It's a TikTok Sneak up behind thing. your buddy and like finger their butt through their jeans. Not as much, but I definitely grab their balls and dick all the, all the time. Yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> yeah. My kid, my kid is uh, is half Japanese and he has lots of Japanese friends. Mm. And he was talking about how they all concho each other. Each other. What's and that? I just thought this was something one of his idiot friends made up. Apparently, this is a time honored Japanese school child tradition. Boys and girls. <laughs> Since the days of yore, I've been trying to concho each other. What is the concho? It's like aggressively sticking your finger in somebody's butt to fuck yeah, with Yeah, I don't... It's I'm, a it's a hmm. unisex pursuit in Japan. My brother-in-law, who was a cop, like a gnarly hardcore one too, LAPD, he, he would do that. And I would assume that that maybe was a macho kind of bro thing where he would just, to fuck with me, I would get a, a credit card swipe or a, a couple fingers up the... Yeah, I don't know if it's like from the childhood trauma or whatever but if you poke me in the butthole i'm gonna punch you in the fucking head don't poke me in my anus hole that's pretty extreme a friend can swipe me though wait swipe okay. or poke yeah what's a swipe what's a swipe down the crack yeah or up wait, like a credit people, you swipe people, a credit card yeah. people do yeah yeah i don't know about that either maybe don't do that yeah that's pleasant is it? Yeah. Wait, you're saying when you feel the finger go down your butt crack, you find that to be a pleasant experience? If unsolicited. If Michael Catherwood had walked in the room today, <laughs> but you don't know it's had, from behind. No, I know. And if if I had been in unawares, he had really with some force given me a concho. Yeah. In the rectum. Yeah. I wouldn't have turned around and punched you or anything. Right. But I would not be amused. Right. I yeah. wouldn't like that. Yeah. That's what if I'm saying. Michael had come in and had seductively run Man. his finger down my butt crack over the pants i would like I'm, that i'm kind of i'm kind of with him seductively yeah and then and then when he turned around i go mm. wait yum. is that the like butthole or the penis i think it's a pleasant sensation it's a funny butt thing crack. to do you're saying you, you will feel ple a pleasant sensation when mike touches your rectum yeah i would say i feel like we should you should put your money where your mouth is and you should present your I, fan I, to you him go right ahead. So i so agree all right yeah go right ahead well, and you will do, do it. Do it right <laughs> you guys, you guys, wait. Make make sure the cameras. Oh yeah, so you, you might need to close you your laptop. laptop. Like I was gonna do. Huh? I was thinking more of a. Okay. Like you're, wait, like, you're like, like you're getting some whipped cream on your finger. Okay. Yeah. Right, Man, right. this conversation is crazy. <clears throat> wait. Oh yeah. 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 Is that, is that enough? Okay. Wait, that's, did, not, that's not bad. That's nice. Did yeah. it feel good? Yeah, sure. You want yeah. him to do it again? It's kind of fun and funny. I, I got to be honest, didn't feel all that what bad about to me you, What about if you did it like four or five times? <laughs> it would get awkward. <laughs> Just right. would, okay. You would start to feel awkward. What? Is that not the... I feel like it's the starter kit to uh, butt fucking, right? Like what if he did it with his face? You're fluffing him. I don't know. I, I would think the starter kit to butt fucking would be blowing him. Your butt... No, you're, you're butt fluffing him right there. You're tantalizing his cheeks. Yeah, but in a comedy way. And he said yeah. that it feels pleasant. Pleasant is the beginning of jizz. Uh, okay, wait, hold on. I that's <laughs> I, I I hear your argument, yeah. but uh, I once received a like a deep tissue sports massage from a man, yeah, and it was very pleasurable from him touching me. Yeah, I did not think that that was a starter to sexual activity. I just thought that that was another person touching me that was very pleasurable. Yeah, I don't understand what's happening. Okay, if it's pleasurable, we're the word jizzing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please make that a shirt. Yeah, I can't wait for everybody to buy it And I also can't wait for Lewis to copy the fucking t-shirt And sell it as his clothing fucking thing God damn dude Back to the matter at hand I have that entire YouGov poll About what percentage of Americans Think they could beat these animals In yes. one on one combat 72% of Americans believe They could win a battle to the death With a rat Who of are course. these 28% that were like No a rat would kick my ass Oh there's I, there's pussies in my life that I go, a rat would win. Elephants. I, I want no part of a fight with the rat. Is it true that elephants are really scared of Mises? Of what? Mises. Probably what the way it? the cats are afraid of like cucumbers. And the way that humans are afraid of spiders and snakes. I mean, we're much bigger and better and we freak the fuck out, you know? Yeah. All right. How, um, how would a rat attack a full grown human? It could go up like, your bum hole. I just don't, I don't know how it would- your intestines. I don't know how yeah. it would kill me, but I think it could keep on landing successful attacks that I did not care for while I was unable to retaliate in any way. Why can't you retaliate? Yeah, why can't you punch a rat? They're hard to catch. Yeah, because it wouldn't be there. 
They're it'll fast be, as fuck. Yeah, it'd be like fighting a really great boxer. He'll just keep on landing stinging shots on me, and when I try to return fire, Where is he coming he's not, from? What are you in the forest or something? Like, how many angles does he have to come at you before you? I look. It's one thing. Yeah. Can a mouse or a rat get a bite on you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If a rat or a mouse is like coming at you, and then he comes from this angle at you, at you, sooner or later he's gonna cop a foot up his ass, and that's game over. No, yeah, you're like, you're, you're right. coming right for me, and you're a rat. I'm booting you to Texas. Not even one, not even a great blow is going to kill That's it. That's what I'm saying. But you think, you, you think I'll kick it while it's coming in for the... That, yes. It's not as easy as it may sound. I mean, for instance, uh, and granted, this is a squirrel, but I think that there's some similarities. One time I was picking up dog poo in my front yard with my boxers on, and I, so hot. I stepped next to a squirrel that I didn't know was there, and I clearly spooked him, and it ran up my leg through my boxer hole... <laughs> It burrowed, got scared, and turned around and went back. And I tried to, I, I, I panicked. He was I didn't, in your pants. It went up my pant leg with yeah. your penis. Yeah, but it didn't. Hit but it was next. He to didn't, where his penis he didn't hit it my got wiener. To your dick. Yeah, he could have. He could have bit my dick, but he did not. And your scrote, man, that is fine. He, he went, burrowed into your. Retina. He went up my hole in my um boxers in my leg, my left leg, and then got panicked, kind of wiggled, turned around, and ran back down. And I, I couldn't. Not a tree. Not a get tree. It. Yeah, I couldn't get it. And so it that, happened. I mean, it was squirrel, fucking like penis. lightning. I know, but if that squirrel was going to beat you in a fight, it would have to keep doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it would have to spend, it, it can't just get like run up your leg, punch you, and then run away real quick. And then no, no, keep no. doing that. But what Tully's saying, I think there's value to it. I, I, imagine a, a, a Butterbean versus Floyd Mayweather. Yes. One shot, Butterbean's going to get that one shot, but it's really fucking hard. And I think that eventually I'm going to get said squirrel or rat and I'm going to kill it and it's going to be brutal and it's going to be rather easy when I do. But there are plenty of people in the world that when that rat or squirrel makes that first attack, they go ah! and lie down and yeah, then that I, and, fucking and think, rat kills it. And I think that that's me and I don't have any shame in admitting that because I think that's a far greater percentage of the population then is willing to admit that to themselves sure. or out loud. I I'm think beating up a, a rat. The vast majority of human beings, a rat comes right for them and then it comes again. They go, ah! Oh, I, would, I like you guys' impression of if it wasn't rat man. If it wasn't a fight to the death, if it wasn't like one of these things where you're like, you gotta kill this rat, it's you, mano y mano. I, if it wasn't that, if it was, I was in New York City and a rat ran at me and hit, I would run away. Yeah. I would not think, even think to try to fight it. I'd be like, what the fuck? I don't know. If you run at me, I feel like I'm going to squeeze you until your eyes pop out of your head and I'm going to eat your eyes. And then I'm going to put fake eyes over your dead eyes and then take you to dinner and drive you around in my car and shit. So your family know that I'm fucking crazy and none of you should would, would ever fuck with me again. Okay, there's a news story I got to talk to you about after we finish this. Don't if forget it. If it's a cage match between me and a rat, I'm winning. You're winning. Yeah. yeah. I will punch that I think, rat right I think we're face. arguing two different things, though. Cage match versus rat, I think most people eventually win. Rambo rat in the wilderness, you might be in trouble is what you're saying. No, no, I'm saying out in the wild, if I have, if I there's no stakes in it for me to kill, yeah. to hunt it down and kill it, oh, I'd, I'd, rather right at you. I'd rather run. I'd rather run. right at you. I'm picturing, you know, sometimes you get a hotel room and, rat the, attack. and the bathroom is like really way too big, like way bigger than a bathroom needs to okay. be. I'm picturing like that size room and I just go in the bathroom at a hotel and the, the doorknob falls off behind me. And now I'm trapped in just a square tile room right. and there's a rat in there and it's been in there for days and it's <laughs> desperate to eat. And so it doesn't even, it's just, it's so hungry. It attacks me right off the bat. Like, yeah, I win eventually, but God, do I get fucked up a few times first. And it's a tense situation. It's horrible. It's, it's, yeah. So, see, I, I just support only 71% of people think that they would beat uh, a goose one on one. I think I handle a goose. I'm, I'm, not too I'm worried destroying about a goose. G mm. Gooses have long necks, right? Yes. yes. It's such a bad thing and to have for a fight. They're not that nimble. They don't have hands. No, you can kick them, you can choke them. I, they don't even have claws. Don't they have like just the flipper ones? Yeah. A goose so what might are they going to give you like a paddle slap? A goose might be at the top of the food chain of things I could kill easily. You know what okay. might be a cool thing to watch? <laughs> a goose attack you with your hands tied behind your back. That'd be cool. Because I don't think a goose can actually do any damage. But I've seen sometimes on YouTube where somebody's leaving the parking lot to go to work and a goose is like, nah, -uh, you're near my goose babies or some shit. And then it's a full goose attack. But the guy is kicking at the goose. And I'm like, 
what if you don't kick and you just let the goose bounce off you a bunch of times? It's he has a beak. He doesn't even have teeth. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and it's not it's not like a veiny swole like a like a wild turkey. That'll yeah. fuck you up. How? I didn't say you. I wouldn't win. But I've been. But a wild turkey. What kind of claws does he have? It, it, that's what I'm talking about. And they will go after. They are. Oh, okay. They're little fucking Diaz brothers animals. Like yeah. they will fucking roll with you. Okay. Um, but you will win. But a, a wild turkey, about similar size to a goose. I mean, these big fucking turkeys like this. They, they're, they're, they're strong necks. They will come after you and they will headbutt you like a, a soccer you think hooligan. You could beat a koala bear. I don't know. They're pretty strong, man. Yeah. They're really strong. Do you think you could beat a panda bear? Yeah, but you don't know if you could beat a koala bear. It, it has nothing to do with like the 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 athletic makeup. Pandas are so fucking timid and lazy. But what about when that one panda bear grabbed that guy out through the fence in the zoo, and he was gonna pull him in half? Maybe, but he had, they're such fat fucking lazy shitheads. Yeah, but I'm not saying could you beat a panda when he's sleeping. I'm saying pandas like fuck you. I'm taking you out. Yes, you're getting taken. I out. think if I go into an octagon with a panda, I'm winning. Uh, I am not so confident as with a koala. I'm kind of under the impression that if I were to wander into the average koala enclosure, the koala kind of knows the fight's probably about to happen, reacts accordingly. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I walk into a panda enclosure, he just still sits there on his fat ass Do eating, hot bamboo? eating bamboo. Man, you guys going, are crazy. I, like, I, I, feel like I, could, I feel like I feel like I could walk around the back of a panda and just punch it in the back all of the head. All my Australian fans are freaking out right now. Koalas are just as fucking relaxed. They're all high on the gum leaves, man. They don't come at anybody. I don't know anything I've about koalas. Seen a koala. I know, but all I know about koalas is they have fucking nails like like Flojo. How could you not know more about koalas than pandas? Pandas is because I have a thing for pandas but if you have a thing for pandas how do you not know about the panda pulling that guy through the fucking zoo fence i do did you see it yeah did it look like you could have got out of that yeah bullshit artist let me tell you something pandas couldn't survive just surviving it's because they're cute and the chinese government has a fucking money boner for them that they even exist because they hey, can't bullshit they can't that. fuck Without being like motivated and drugged, they can't fucking fight. They're they're useless fat piles of shit. But because Westerners go around and go, oh, so cute little fucking panda, they preserve them. They could they are not for this world. They, they are shit. Crazy power. I bet you they have crazy power, strength, they got claws, they rip bamboo to shreds. They if they get a hold of a human, they're way stronger than us. I wouldn't say that they're not. A koala's not. But there's plenty of fucking... A koala is There's plenty of meatheads that I see you know that? at uh, Gold's Gym that are way stronger than me, and I look at them, and I was like, I, I'm going to fucking... I could murder that person. I think... Yeah, I think wow. pa pandas are stronger. I just think koalas, I Im Im imagine they're more ready to go. If the panda my realizes feeling. the fight is on before I bring it to him, I think I'm in trouble. I just think that they're so disinterested in reality. That's what koalas are. Yeah, maybe. You might be right. You I know right. nothing of koalas, and I, I just, this is assumption. I just feel like they have really big talons, and I feel like they are a little bit more aggressive. Talons? Yeah. Isn't that what they're called? Talons? Talons? <laughs> <laughs> Peyton Manning? <laughs> Peyton Manning, yes. <laughs> it's pronounced Taylun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Spanish. 69% uh, of people think they can beat up a house cat. I think that's a bad fight for me. No. What the murder. hell? Why do you guys all think you can get beat up by all these animals? Yes, you're crazy. I, I reckon a house cat could beat you. No way. Do you know yeah. why? Because here's what it comes down to. I, I really think a lot of it is Jason goes into these battles assuming that he's going to have to stay the course and stick with some sort of plan while taking damage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I am not able to continue fighting while taking damage. If you just say, well, just let it scratch the shit out of you while you choke it to death. I'm not able to hold on to things that are scratching the shit out of me. Oh. Involuntarily, I throw them away from me so they stop scratching the shit out of me, enabling them to do it again. Have you ever seen that cat get out of the cage and grab the dude on the inner thigh. No. Man, that guy ain't going anywhere. That guy is locked in and and, and it's a it's like a guy that comes to your house to get an animal out or whatever and it was like an angry right. cat and it was bouncing around everywhere and he finally got a hold of it and it got on the inside of his thigh and you could tell when it wrenched on and like locked all the all the claws he he like freaks out. Yeah. Oh yeah! Like, I'm like, man, you gotta you gotta bash that 
to death. Right. Because he's not going to let go. But, no. but, but, oh, okay. I think th that's a good example because what Tully's saying is that when that thing latches on, like most people, like myself, if I wasn't in a battle to the death, I would go, oh, fuck, what am I going to, because I don't want to kill this cat. Yeah. If I'm in a, if I'm in a pay per view battle, that thing latches on. I go, ow. I grab its neck and I squeeze and I murder it. Yeah. It's dead. You know what I'm A house cat, I could break its neck with very little fucking effort. Yeah. But yeah, you're, I, you're probably right. Man. Like M. Bison in la <laughs> with the soldiers. Listen, we're all very excited to talk about Street Fighter. <laughs> not yet. Some not yet. Some of us. Uh, let me see. E, let me know if any of these pique your interest. Eagle, dogs. I, 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 I like my chance against a medium sized dog more than a house cat. That's just me. A yeah. chimpanzee. They a, eat your hands. Yeah, chimps are bad fight for. I would not. No, 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 no. Listen, I don't care. John Jones. No one's beating a chimp. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> no one's be chimpanzees. I saw an old video from like the '30s, black and white video yeah. of a chimpanzee chilling, like looking around, ah, pulling a train, <laughs> like this on a rope. Yeah. Okay, they're fucking. Gnarly. There was one time there was a chimpanzee that had like a 50th birthday because he's all old and he moved into like some other house and his owners, they're all old and they came to give him a cake and he ate the cake and their hands and their genitals. <laughs> and their faces. Oh, and their faces. <laughs> and that's like a guy way, way in retirement zone. He was yeah. like, you know what? I don't mind if I do. F fuck you guys for letting yeah. me stay in this house. I mean, your genitals. That's the thing is like once a like the house cat example, once a chimp gets on you, like you're not getting it off. Yeah, you're dead. It's we going all to agree. kill you. We all agree. I don't know how 15% of people believe they're going to defeat a King Cobra in combat. That's in, that's spear. That's everybody who was asked that question when they'd been drinking. Yeah. Wait, if wait, wait. If you're a dude and you've been drinking and someone asks you that, you better say that you could beat a, yeah, of course you could beat a Cobra. It will have well, landed the death blow could. before you realize it has started to strike. Can you, this is the thing, if you've had no training, because I see people that fuck with those guys all the time because they know how to fuck with those guys. They that's get it different. from behind. Oh, that's and, totally different, yeah. But yeah. if you're just us and we don't know, and you're like, I'm going to pump fake him, <laughs> yeah. and then when he goes to bite me, I'll be back here, and I'll be like, wham, and I'll grab under his neck, and then I'll fucking snap it. Right. Game over. Okay, what about this? If a king but, cobra bites me, and I grab him while yeah. he's attached to my arm, and I rip his head off. Yeah. And then I die from the toxins. That doesn't Does count, that count as, a, as a, no, no. You did not win. I I killed him how first. Quick, also, how quickly? He died first. Wait. How quickly does the the venom of a king cobra kill you? Takes a bit. Okay. Yeah. So so if Kevin's You're in victorious a Kevin's like in a minutes. Dana White sponsored fucking pay per view with a king cobra, round one they oh, both they have got the antidote, and he gets bit, and then Kevin goes ah fuck, and then rips its eye of uh, our uh, yeah, head open. Yeah. Wins, yeah. Walks out of the cage and they give him antidote. Yeah, that's a yes. It is. Wait, 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 wait. When a king cobra bites you, does it just hang off of your arm and celebrate like a guy who just dunked a basketball hanging off the rim? No, I think it stays fucking, on there. Does yeah. It? yeah, yeah. I think okay. they stay on. Yeah, but I also remember think when that anaconda bit me on the show. Yeah, you didn't notice that it wasn't letting go. I always think of the the poisonous uh, uh, snakes just kind of like darting in and. Delivering the thing and getting. I think back some out. of I think yeah, vipers and stuff. Tiger too. snakes okay. do that. Yeah. Okay, but there's only a few snakes that are known to bite more than once. Yeah. Most snakes are known for, I'm scared and I zap you and I get the fuck out of mm -hmm. there. So here's the here's the stats on king cobra venom. Um, in a single bite, they can deliver enough venom to kill twenty people. Oh shit! Or oh, an shit. elephant. Jesus yeah. Christ! And if you are bitten by a king cobra, it can kill you within fifteen minutes. Oh. Do I get a flute when I go into battle against it? <laughs> Can you drink Unarmed. King Cobra instead? Is there an anti-venom thing for that? An I, know, I know a guy. If we can just, if you can just hold on until I get you to South Africa. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got <laughs> fifteen minutes. So. See, because like, is it? I don't know. I, I, from what I understand, it's like the black mamba or something like that. There's snakes that kill you in like ten seconds. Uh, like you're fucking done. Yeah. Uh. Check them out. Yeah, because then they win. It's gonna they be win. a lonely sure. road, though. No one really wants to hang out with you. Oh yeah. no. No, no. You know, <laughs> probably don't have a lot of buddies in the That's what I'm saying. animal world. And I don't feel like when you have when you're a snake and you have baby snakes that your baby snakes are all attached to you, like mama or anything. I don't think it's like that. I think it's just like fuck off. It's funny that Kobe was named the Black Mamba, and I yeah. feel like he was kind of in a similar situation. What do you mean? Yeah, I don't feel like, like he was a pleasant guy to be around. What? I what think are you, you talking about? Um, I 
I know very well, very, very well, like he's personal friends asshole. that no, no, with LA broadcasters, LA Laker broadcasters, yeah, and um, they knew him. To people be an who asshole. have, and I've talked to L, former LA Lakers that were, and um, I don't think he's a a, a really nice, pleasant fella. Wow, I'm not saying he's not a great dad or a great uh, husband. I'm saying like in general in life, I, I if Kobe wasn't one of the most excellent basketball players that ever lived, I don't think you'd like want to hang out with the guy. Uh, you yeah. realize we're still in like Los Angeles County, right? Yeah, and I'm the a you realize hard- there's still a mural for him. Like I'm a die by die hard Laker fan. I look, I would say the same government thing. decree every third block has a mural of Kobe Bryant and his daughter. I'm telling you, as a dot die hard Laker and Dodger fan, I there are certain people. That I absolutely Kobe Bryant at the top of the list of the guy I always loved having on my team because he is a fucking murderer. Piece of shit of a will, guy. But rest I, in peace. I yeah. have not heard a lot of great things about like hanging out with the wow. dude. That's all. But t- look, you- same goes for Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes but he did not die. No. True. <laughs> yes. No, it's piece of shit too. We agree. But yeah, alive, Kobe Bryant. Nonetheless. Hell of a guy in the saint. Yeah. Hey, did you know that? Word on the street is Suge Knight paid to have Biggie killed. It's like out there now. This thing that's been up there for a while, hasn't it? No. Oh, just got to my street. I but think there was. was like, I think there was like some documentary about it. But it's like for real now. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that was that was his currency. Was it wasn't just about the music at that time? They were selling millions of records. Because Biggie, Tupac, East Coast, West Coast thing. That was the thing. So if I'm Suge Knight, I'd be like, what can we do to keep this going? Who's worse? Suge Knight or Woody Allen? Suge Knight. Really? Yeah. yeah. Woody Allen is gross. Suge Knight fuck kids? No, but Woody Allen didn't fuck legal kids. And uh, he, uh, Well, Soon Yi was, was an adult, uh, right? There's right. another one. Oh, there, there was? Yeah, Dylan. His actual Dylan. daughter. Oh, yeah. that the the one who did the article. You're right. Okay, I take that back. I don't know. So if you put all them together and stir them in a pot, you're a fucking molester. Yeah, that's no, no, no. I I just never I've never heard anyone without Suge Knight in the room get uh, on the air and be like, it's really it's, it's a good guy. It's good. All I hear is horrible, uh uh racketeering, uh, violence. Well, you know, just abusive, horrible shit. Yeah, the shit. top 10 people who would defend Woody Allen's honor are far more honorable people than the top 10 people who will defend. I, isn't that crazy, Michael? Dude, I've heard murderous gangbangers be like, fuck Suge Knight. And I, yeah. I, I, you watch some of those, like uh, the making of the NWA movie. Um, I forgot that. Straight, Straight out of Compton. Out of Compton. Um, yeah, there's, there's hardened fucking bloods and crips. And they're like, fuck that guy. He ruined everything. He's a piece of shit. So, hmm. I mean, if there was any facts to killing Biggie, I can't even imagine. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I don't know if he was just going to keep cranking the hits. It's pretty hard for somebody to do that if they've been around for thirty years. But I definitely think he had a lot more to give the the world. And also, I found him to be a pretty positive guy. And all that shit where there was beef, I he did kind of. I rem- remember him saying that um, nothing's worth dying over i mean like he was it seemed like he was in a corner where tupac was like fuck you we're coming for and he was like man i'm not i'm not anybody's bitch like i'm not gonna just stand here but if you wanted a truce i feel like he would have been okay with it i, I don't know shit. i don't it seem like he wasn't as into having a war for the rest of his life as tupac was i don't disagree and i think probably personally the notorious big was like a nice guy yeah but i will say he played a role for a living he made a living off of putting on a costume of being this thug murderer thing it wasn't a costume it kind of is it's kind he of sold, LARPing. He was a drug it's dealer. kind of larping i mean you know? he was an actual drug dealer i understand got, that i remember in the documentary there was a time where diddy called him was like do not get on that plane to go where i know you're going to go like you will end your career if you do that i i'm not saying he didn't deal drugs not what i'm saying is that if you're going to make songs about robbing banks and pistol whipping people and being a murderer yeah, yeah, and yeah. playing that okay. role and living that life. Same with Tupac and same with, with Snoop and all the, you can't necessarily get too surprised when legitimate gangbangers come in to cash in. That's all I'm saying. Like, and I've heard I, plenty of like real actual gangbangers where they're like, you're playing fucking fantasy. You understand? This is my life. Yeah, this is nothing to like aspire for. I felt like I got attacked by a gangbanger yesterday. 
somebody was offended that I said that Jake Paul was tougher than most of you uh, social media tough guys. And he said something about, um, you know, you and Jake Paul are bitches or some <laughs> shit. And I was like, and I was like, that's crazy because Jake Paul's still tougher than your private account, pussy. And then he said a bunch of stuff in Spanish, where I was assuming it wasn't like we should meet and like get tacos. Or would something. you? Would you like some food? I'll bring it over. My grandma will yeah. cook it for you. I just, I was like, I, I, I was like, I think that's a bit sad. Because mm. I, I was definitely, I was felt like he got, he almost cursed me or something. I was like, man, just because Jake Paul's tough, it really does offend people that I think that that guy is tough. Yeah. Because I also feel like he, I know er, er, the average person, and you would not. You can say it on Twitter all you want, but you would not fight Tyron Woodley. You wouldn't. No fucking way. And I'm not talking about getting in there with the gloves Wait, on and getting hit one time and taking a knee and calling it a day. I'm talking about fighting like you're gonna win. Were there lots of people saying that they would beat up Tyron Woodley? Yeah, a lot of people are saying, big deal, why don't you fight a real boxer instead of just some MMA guy? Even, what is that moron that ESPN loves? Stephen Avery? Stephen Fuck A. Smith? that guy is a dumb oh, yeah. bag of dicks. Stephen A. Smith Holy is... Holy shit, you can't be... I get mm. it where you go, hey, ho, 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 you say it like this and they pay attention. Cool, that's a cool gimmick. But the MMA knowledge and, no, like, just the gusto of, like, Try and fight a boxer for once. I'm like, man, this guy's had three fights against absolutely nobody. And you're trying to say Tyron Woodley is not good with his hand. He's a wrestler for crying out loud. I'm like, okay, yep. Yeah, that's true. But he that also has guy, murderous hands. Yeah. Like, I've, oh, he knocked, he fucking put Darren Till on Queer Street. Like, yeah. you understand how? <laughs> yeah, like, I know that it's different. Boxing and kickboxing is two different things as well. But I've, um, this is a this is a guy who's a proper athlete who doesn't have any uh, heat. When I see him punch, I go, yeah, 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 Stuck. really, really good technique, really yeah. sound. And is he as fast as he's ever been? No, but he's still at a speed that is going to be faster than Jake Paul. It, I, I, I honestly, I, I think. Look, with Stephen A. Smith in particular, there's a lot of people in sports and in politics uh, broadcasting, and I got to know them off the air. And you realize, oh, they're just super smart. And Stephen A. Smith, he's maybe the highest paid. Yeah. He's certainly in the top three highest paid sports yeah. broadcasters in the world. Yeah. And he's a very smart, very thoughtful guy. And yeah. I think he realized probably about a decade ago that I can make a good living being the thoughtful guy. Yeah, yeah. I can make... Ten look, million dollars a year going. Michael Jordan doesn't I, get respected because he's black. I just, I just, for the sake of everybody in MMA, it's the same as in skateboarding. I didn't like it when people were super involved in skateboarding that didn't skateboard. I wanted everybody in skateboarding to get a job after they finished being professional. All the pain and suffering they went through. I want them to have a job in skateboarding. I want some other fucking asshole ESPN knob coming in, swooping everybody's right. shit. And I feel like the guy, as you said, is one of the highest paid people there is. Mm -hmm. Why are you in MMA? Like, give that to Dominic Cruz or give it give it to an MMA guy. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we... And, and you know what? i give you a different argument if everything you said was spot on and you were... I bet, wow, that's, I didn't know that. Yeah. But you sound um, like you're not that knowledgeable in the sport. And it's crazy how much of a, a platform they've given you to discuss it. It's it, a... It's a it's a bit of an insult. It is crazy. And that's one of the things I've noticed when ESPN took over uh, the, the, MF, the UFC contract is that uh, they have at their disposal, Ariel Hawani and, and, and Dominic and these insanely good analysts. Um, and yet they let call, uh, Colin Cowherd or, or whoever the fuck, you know, uh, and Stephen A. Smith, because the UFC has to be a prominent part of ESPN, yeah. they're just like, and, and make sure you make a comment about this. And it's yeah. like, why? Why would you? Why would you have a guy say that Nate Diaz beat Conor McGregor with sumo wrestling? Why would you put that on broadcast? I guess like, I should look at it in a positive way because Stephen A. Smith is a mainstream uh, sports announcer, and now he knows the names of a lot of people in MMA. Yeah. So that uh, it'll be like if. Stephen A. Smith was talking about what happened at Dew Tour. And I'm like, man, you don't fucking skate. But 
there's so many people that listen to him from a different walk of life that might now officially know who, you know, Lizzie Armanto is or something like that. Right. And that helps skateboarding. So I guess I'm really, yeah, but for me, I'm like the core of it. I'm like, man, you're kind of fucking wishy washy in it with your phony ass dude that can't hit pads. But, but he is bringing awareness to it. But, but he could do that. Okay. Let, let's use skateboarding as an example. X Games comes around. Stephen A. Smith is hosting his show, talking about the X Games. Man, that girl, Lizzie, wow, what guts. That was a, did you guys see that fall? Let's kick it to, Tony Hawk to break it down for us. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He could have brought the awareness. Why he would never in a million years, never in a million years, would ESPN be like Stephen A. Smith? We need you to break down the half pipe for us. Uh, and then later on, Moto I'll X. You, I'll tell you when he would when it it was a when it was apparent that it was the most relevant thing in sports right now because that's really all it is. He wants yeah. to be as relevant as possible. And I'm not sure, Michael, especially you guys. You guys are American born who have grown up with mainstream sports. Yes, from here. So I don't know. That's right. And I can go back where I came from and all that stuff. You know how big football and baseball yes. and basketball has been in your life. And now MMA, I don't, I mean, I only know, MMA. I followed NBA for a while, so I know how big it is. But is, is the UFC, is MMA as big as no. those? Nowhere no, near, no, right? No, those no, no. household names of those baseball right, guys right. and football guys Destroy the names of uh, of the MMA guys. Uh, other, not, other than the top one or two people, yeah. even even the top so one Conor or two McGregor, people, everybody knows that. Conor right? McGregor Ronda. and, and Ron, they're they're getting to that that awareness where they're on Ellen, they're on late night shows. Yes, they have definitely elevated, but you can't compare anyone in the world of MMA to like an Aaron Rodgers or or you see, know, I don't know who Aaron Rodgers is. Yeah, uh, Ben Roethlisberger. You know what I'm saying? Like NFL, Ben Roethlisberger is a football player yeah. that had a motorcycle crash and sexually assaulted somebody i know about motorcycle crashes i don't know about oh any, really i don't know about i'm ben right michael oh there, i think there was more than one accusation yeah. with lady something in a bathroom and i will yeah. say this i hate to judge a book by its cover but if you i was watching an interview with him yesterday because he just announced that he negotiated a new contract with with the steelers he looks like a guy that does bad stuff mm. like you if you told you me can't, he, you can't judge a book by its covers but yeah he looks like a guy i used to buy meth from Wow, that's a like he, he was just like right. the, 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 just flying just over here. Angry well, like, white guy. Yeah. Two things. ESPN didn't get in the UFC game to keep the UFC a fringe sport. Yeah. Yep. ESPN has certain things it can do to elevate the status of things. It yep. leverages its platform. And Stephen A. Smith is one of the biggest things it can it's he's their number yep. one leading yep. gas bag. And also bear this in mind, he's I'm sure he's less knowledgeable about MMA than he is about boxing or football. But people who are knowledgeable about those sports complain about him as well. Yeah. Like, oh, you, wow. They which, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As in, he doesn't know. I'm Like I'm saying, he knows far more about that. He grew up watching basketball and, and football. And I think he actually is a pretty legit boxing guy, at least as a sincere fan yeah. interest. Uh, you guys know what clickbait is, right? Yeah, absolutely. You no. can put okay, so you can put an article on the internet that are like, here are several things that we might consider changing about our social security policy to ensure a saner future for a brighter America tomorrow. And and nobody clicks on that. Yeah. And you could go, Donald Trump just said the most insane shit ever. And everybody clicks on that. Yeah. There's an art or a science to saying things in such a way that people just can't turn off the TV. Cause you're either like, yeah, finally somebody said it, or can you fucking believe this guy saying this shit? And there's just the right way to thread that needle of saying stuff that it's like trolling. Really? Yeah. You say stuff that people can't help, but react to and comment on and retweet. And Steven Smith is, that is his value. He's to a sniper. ESPN. He's a sniper at it. Like, Tolly's exactly right, and that, that's why I'm saying, like, I, same as a guy, same as Cowherd, and as a guy who I've interviewed Stephen A. Smith uh, twenty times and talked to him off on off the air, he's super smart and he's super got his shit together, and I think he realized, like Tolly said, there's a there's a level you get to with being a good sports analyst. There's a level you get to with being a guy who can do clickbait. Um, uh, uh, Skip Bayless is another example, but then. Fuck Skip Bayless. At, um, Fuck all these guys. I'm fucking uh, Brendan Sharp. I don't know if he has a gang sign, but I'm fucking belt. I'm on the below the belt I'm trying to be Aaron Carter. <laughs> below the belt and shit. You, what's up? Cut. Pretty good. <laughs> Sharp. Sharp below the belt. In your, what's up? I saw it with, um, with Hannity. Um, Fuck that guy too. About as famous as anyone in, in broadcasting, regardless conservative or, or um, 
liberal. And uh, when I worked at 790 KBC here in LA, it was, it's kind of like a well-known political, super kind of conservative leaning station. And I worked there for some time and I got a chance to see these weird people, you know, in, in a more human way. And uh, watching Sean Hannity go off and on the air, you're like, oh, oh, you're just a genius. That's all. He's Tom Likas, but for politics. Mm. Tom Likas doesn't believe that you shouldn't Is only he spend- dead yet? I don't think so. Man, no, I think on. he still collects checks. <laughs> the fuck, Likas? He's Tom like, Likas did not believe that you should only spend $20 on a date. Tom Likas did not believe that women shouldn't work. Tom Likas knew that if he said that in that way, the phones would light up and he was, he was, he was smart. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not, it's just not something I'd want to do. Speaking of commenting on combat sports, I feel like we really grazed over you getting kicked in the face. Um, well, yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's confusing. Is that a big deal? And was, I, I also don't know how much to dissect it prior to actually having the video available for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I they can, we, if, if they're on YouTube, we could get it spliced in somewhere in here. Yeah, they'll definitely either put it in when <laughs> I brought it up before or right now, because now they have two options to do it. It do happened. It ha I mean, I was not sure how that was going to play out. When when we talked about it yesterday, uh, I was I was really on the fence of of my, like, having faith in that being pulled off. Yeah. But... As Holy in shit! What? The, not working out how? The, I don't know. The glove flying off, or it just not. Just Which happened once? Wet noodle it, it practice round, yeah. But that first one where you went for it, you really just kicked Jason right in the fucking face. Like that was a really solid kick. Yeah, we were. Just I was playing. impressed. You're fucked yeah. up, Mike. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're definitely a tweaker. <laughs> um, yeah, I did a when we did a Patreon show yesterday. Kevin was punching me in the I face. Saw, I saw. And he fucking won't do it. Like you can tell, he's so. He thinks, you know, like if you get punched in the face, it hurts. It doesn't hurt if you practice a lot, you know? I felt God, bad to really stupid. go for it. And then the video goes on, on Instagram. Everybody's like, oh, Kevin punches like a pussy. Stop. But don't like, listen. Yeah. Listen yeah. To me. yeah. You should have cracked was, me. Look at me. I'm, I'm being serious. Don't listen. That's just internet tough guy. You're, it's your friend punching him while he stands still. Even if he's saying, do it, do it. It's not comfortable. Okay? I'm don't so listen tough. to those people. I'm in the shops. I really and frankly, don't get that reference. Frankly, really you don't know nerdy. gang signs? Sorry, I've been watching Aaron Carter. He says that <laughs> oh. he's in a gang and he does some weird things with his fingers. You know, like he's a gang guy. No, I don't and like I, that. Are you sure that isn't just a lingering side effect of some of the decisions he's made? Of the aerosol <laughs> sniffing? <Some> ticks? <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope... Oh, there goes my crap hand. <laughs> I sure, sure hope. <laughs> oh, shit. Crack hands at it again. Fucking representing... I sure hope that if that's true, that um, real gangbangers don't get a hold of said footage because I just I feel bad for that guy and that he's, would not be good. Shout yeah, out Crustacean Nation. He's yeah. done he's done it at us. He's done it like at Josh and me. I understand that, but I would. Like, I have like, a, you don't even know, man. I'm from Tampa. I have a hard time believing that the average like blood or MS13 guy is all on Aaron Carter's fucking Instagram. <laughs> I, do, you I don't think, think if that they that saw happens. that that they would. Yeah. He, he says disciples. I don't know what that. I mean, that does he sound did, awfully Aryan. He did beat Shaq. He'll tell you in a fight. He did. Remember, he I, he well, kind of. I just saw a video of Lamar Odom watching Aaron Carter punch a bag with no clothes on, <laughs> and Aaron. I don't. Have you seen that? No. So Aaron Carter punches a uh, a, a stationary bag yeah. in his backyard, butt naked. Mm. Little weenie oh, wow. flicking around. Good for him. Wait, his dick was out? Good Dude, for him. Total knob swinging around. You Wait, haven't seen this? Uh, I mean, was this on his OnlyFans? No, I think he did that on uh, maybe on his OnlyFans. Probably but it Twitter, was on right? some kind of live feed and they, they recorded it and then they uh, posted it on my Twitter. There's a couple of people that are Aaron Carter uh, enemies and Aaron Carter fans and I couldn't tell which one is which. They just both, they just all support um, making fun of Aaron somehow. I don't know. But yeah, apparently at one point, this is video of Aaron recently smashing a fucking heavy bag out by his pool, butt ass naked with his little wiener ping ponging around. Good for him, man. And then I saw Lamar Odom watch that and Lamar Odom said, I am definitely going to make this dude pay for this. I don't know why that offended Lamar Odom mm, more than just mm, come on. fighting Aaron Carter in the first place. Mm, come on. What do you mean? Come on, you know, because you know, because it's a gay thing to do, and yeah, and Lamar's a uh, black fella. 
It's not, it doesn't, you know, if I'm playing the odds, not a, I don't think it's crazy or racist or a bit even fucking judgmental to say American black community, not, not typically big fans of gay shit. Such a crazy wow, wow. thing. First to... Kobe and then this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get it, Mike. Wow. I think it's a crazy thing to know that I know that a lot of gay people are not, especially old school gay people are not that understanding of my pansexuality. And, and I thought of all people, how could you not understand somebody living a different lifestyle when you grew up, nobody understanding the lifestyle that you live. Mm. And it's the same as black people have been persecuted their whole fucking lives. And they're like, whoa, hey, fucking homos. And I'm like, it's the same thing. Like it's right. new people that uh, that are different, and the more everyone becomes aware of it, the more they want to push them aside and keep them in their own little thing. They don't want to let them all be a part. Like all everybody gets treated equal. I'm like, as a group of people that haven't been treated equal, it's weird that you don't understand that you're doing that to your brothers and sisters in the gay community. Yeah, there's there's a long history of that, and I think uh, at first glance, um, and then a lot of you do with the DL thing, which means a lot of you do. Uh, sex with men and don't get tested and don't take the 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 prep or any of that stuff, which means you're HIV spreading when you do that. Yeah. All people that ever hit me up on Grinder that are DL, no fucking way. Because I know that you're like some suspect motherfucker. It's very that, true. And there's no way they're cleaning their butt out properly. No. Thank you, Michael. That's not why, but yep. No, but, but since the beginning, <laughs> really, of like America, that's always been like, you were like, well, you were persecuted. You were persecuted. You shouldn't you guys have a con... But, um, you know, you look at like the Jewish community and the and the Puerto Rican community or black community in, in New York. And then certainly there's this wild history of Mexicans and blacks in, in L.A., um, which has thankfully gotten a million times better in the last like decade or so. But either way, there's this you would say, like, well, why can't you of all people empathize? And the reality is it's because you've been fucked with so long that you've come to realize and it's part of the fabric of who you are, that it's me. It's us against the world. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with what you've experienced. I know if I'm a Jew, I know for 2,000 years, all I have is my other Jews. All I have if I'm a black guy in America is I'm my going fucking to a Sabbath family. Party you know? soon. I Googled what that was today. Nice. A Shabbat. No, a Shabbat. <laughs> Shabbat? Yeah, sorry. I'm going to a Shabbat. It's just a dinner. <laughs> I Googled it. I mean, there's some other things too, but. Probably yeah. a little more kosher food. I like just, that, yeah. yeah, I just feel like I wish everybody could give everybody a chance it's just so simple to me it's like there's a new group in town what does this new group do are they hurting anybody you know the only bad thing is when people come in from the side and tell you about this group and how much pain they're bringing to the rest of us and that is not true because gay people don't they're not hurting anybody you know the the, the black people of the world aren't hurt you can't say they're hurting people you can't say one person one group is bad for us. We're all here. You know, like, I don't know who told you or what school you went to where you're like, uh-uh, that's bad. Those guys are bad. That's the whoever said that, whoever wrote that down. That's not true. We're all equal. We're all moms and dads and granddads and babies. We're all, we all started, even Stevens, with when, I, when it comes to love and hate in our hearts. So... You know that, and I know you know, even the people that really like, fuck this guy and fuck those guys and fuck you, Ellis. I know you know it's wrong. I know you know you're being mean because you just feel anger and you want to lash out. That's really what it is. It's your own problem now. Like, I feel like I just, you know, and every, everything that's new to me that I don't understand, just dive into it and try to meet the people of this walk of life, and you will find out that they're, once again, just fucking us. They're just all us. We're all the same. We're all terrified. Let it go. Yeah. You know, suck a butt. Enjoy. Embrace. On that heartwarming note, before we go, I did want to tell you guys about the self-styled Satanist who beheaded his cellmate. <laughs> I knew. Cool. I, I have video. I actually watch video of him. What? Did you? Yeah. He's got like. Doing the beheading? No, nah, no. Nah, he's just got like enough face tattoos to kind of understand that. Oh. He And he, he he did an interview in, in uh, court where he was like, uh, yeah, I'm happy I did it, and I'll do it again. Like, yeah. probably don't let me around somebody. I think that was when he was in court several years ago. Oh. So, yeah, he 
pretty much promised he was going to continue torturing people if he could. Can't we just, I mean, come on. When you were talking about the, what was it, a rat or a squirrel cutting its eyes off and yeah. putting other eyes, and that's what reminded me of this guy. And I don't even really want to give him press because he loves the attention and he's like sure. a self-styled Manson kind of guy. But <clears throat> in an Epstein-esque turn of fate, the guards, the prison guards say they did their rounds and everything seemed fine. Somehow they missed on their rounds that they definitely did the fact that this guy who's covered with, you know, pentagram tattoos and stuff had hung you not true a white sheet to just I don't know why the guy that he tortured and killed somehow did not make any noise. Oh, I'm sure he did. But well, I also I'm for, sure at a gnarly prison, there's a lot of noise all the time. I think after you die, he started pulling his organs out and stuff. There was no real yelling. You know? well, How do you get a head off in a in a prison cell? You don't have a, any really sharp knives. It's a shank, son. You shank, you yeah. sharpen some. But I, I will say, knife. you guys know I love gross stuff on the internet. Yeah. But I don't like, I'm not a fan of, of real life violence. I don't like, I like death metal and the fun of it. Yeah, hey, you're all touchy about kicking me in the head, you I, giant I, badge. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like the idea of it. And and um, I, I will say, honestly, out of all the crazy shit I see on the internet, there's only one thing that I'm like, I really wish I didn't see them. That was one of the early beheadings from... Al Qaeda. It was that fucked me up too. It was so horrible. Like how he was like screaming, and then the screaming stopped, and then you hear like, and it takes forever. It's not like some Indiana Jones movie where a guy just comes and goes, Ching! like he's just sitting there sawing. Oh, oh shit! I got um, a lot of details, but I regret bringing this up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make a coming sound. All right. Ah, I'm Are coming. we done? Yeah. Like it's gonna go home. <laughs> oh man, wait, we do, come on, Kathy. You really what I do? Like and subscribe and be cheery and, and live and be happy and rejoice. Plenty more where this came from every week on on Patreon. Yes, check us out on YouTube, especially if you want to see the head kick, everybody. Yes, Patreon slash Ellis mate. Don't die. Blip, blip, blip. Do do do. Point boom, bing, oh. boing, point, 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 Big fat If you want more Jason Ellis show, sign up for their Patreon at patreon.com slash ellismate for a two-hour show every Tuesday and Wednesday. To watch full episodes of the Jason Ellis show, subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Jason Ellis show. And don't forget to follow the crew on Instagram at Wolfmate, at Tollywood, at Kevin Craft, at Underwear Wolf, and at The Jason Ellis Show. Oh,